my dudes, my guys, my freaking boys. All right. So we finally got a battery for this thing last night. So I think it's, I think it's time to put a battery in this thing. I think it's about what time it is. All right. So uh, I'm going to dive into it and it's not going to be as easy as I thought. So bear with me. Okay. So if you can see it right here, this is a hole to stop this whole mount from like doing this little number, right? I mean, it's got like three other bolts in it. Would it be fine with those three? Probably. Do I feel comfortable with just those three? Absolutely not. Um, so where I'm gonna have the battery sitting is gonna be, let's see if I can do this with one hand. I'm gonna put it like this. Like, all right, you get the point. I'm gonna put it in there like that, just straight. So that bolt is in the way. I can't go any further down because the trans, and I can't go any further down on this side because there's an AC line right there. Right now it's resting on both. So it's gonna have to come up from that. So that bolt is for sure 10 out of 10 in the way. So what I'm thinking here, hear me out, is I'm gonna take this whole thing out, mark it, drill a bigger hole through it, and then I'm gonna riv nut into the body uh, for one of the mounts for the battery holder right here. So, you know, that and that would be marked over here. I think it's just going to be the one, though. I think it's just going to be the upper one. But it's going to be marked, like, right here. And I'll drill a big hole out and then rib nut into the body. And then, you know, it's going to sandwich that plate still in. I would like it out here. This is ideal, but it's not going to work. Um, and then the other one is going to be, like, down here. And then I'm going to have to build some type of, I'll probably just make, like, an L bracket here. To drill the other one through and rib nut it there and then there's gonna be a rib nut here and a rib nut here so i guess let's just build stuff all right so i got it marked right there um now i'm gonna have to take this entire bracket out which sucks and i'm gonna spare you guys from having to watch that so i'm basically just gonna jack the trans up under this bolt under these three and then take that whole thing out and then drill something for that and hopefully behind the body right here i'm gonna mark it down here somewhere but hopefully behind the like in the body down here there will be a spot to put a riv nut if not i don't know what i'm gonna do yet we'll figure that out all right so we got the bracket pulled out and as you can see there's just a void there so new game plan is going to be to countersink this and use like a flathead like phillips or something down in there I guess it's gonna be the only real way to do it. So, not ideal, but we can definitely go to the parts store and get this right here and just get it to be like a flathead screw, like a countersunk flathead screw or something. So, I think that's gonna be the game plan. That's gonna be the best bet. So, I guess I'm gonna drill this out while it's out of the car. It'll be easier to drill anyway. So I'll drill this out for riv nut and then we can start putting stuff together, I guess. So we got a rivet nut in, as you can see they're just like a rivet, but like a threaded rivet. And then I countersunk that with the tools that I have. It's not perfect, but it'll work. So then go ahead and throw this back in and then mark the rest of our holes and drill everything else out. All right, so I don't have the bolts we need. So I'm on the way to Ace Hardware. I'm gonna get the bolts for the, to bolt the battery tray up after we've used all the rivet nuts. And I'm gonna try to find a, like a countersunk Phillips head screw or something for the um, for that bracket so but the main thing to remember is anytime you go out for bolts definitely don't grab enough and definitely make sure that you have to go back out and get more even forget one you just just forget one you're gonna have to make more than one trip when it comes to a bolts run that's like absolutely necessary so let you know we're back in the house with the wrong bolts all right, so we went and got the bolts. They didn't have the countersink screw that I needed. Uh, it looks like I'm gonna have to order that online. So what we'll do is we'll get all this stuff mounted up and then I will buy a countersink screw and then I'm gonna have to end up taking it all back out to put that countersink screw back in. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill this out now and uh, get this uh, battery tray mounted. All right, so we got it in. Right now I just have one bolt down here. 
I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, that one bolt down there. That upper bolt, I'm gonna have to build something for. And you can see it just like barely clears everything. I bent the AC line out of the way so it's not hitting. See, it's missing now. I don't know if you can see, but it's missing. And then I got two in there and I can't get that third one because I'm gonna have to like pull the trans out to do that. So for now, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> like it's in there. I think those three will hold it for now. And then at some point when the radiator has to come out or the trans has to come out, I'll just add the other two, the other two bolts. But for now, she is in there. All right, so it's finally all mounted up. As you can see, I ran this cable on backwards just because it fits better. At some point, I'll have to build a real one. It's kind of ugly right now, but it'll work for now. It's in there. It's not moving. So I guess now I'm going to tackle this uh, core support and get that in since I just bought the rivnut tool. So wherever it's at, that's not it. Yeah, over there. All right, so I got this on there. As you can see there, as you can see there, this piece is in. Uh, the sun is absolutely violating me and I can't see anything and I cannot find the hood latch. We have two hood latches. I don't know where either of them are. So I'm just gonna call it quits for today. And uh, yeah, so we got the battery in. We got this guy on here. Um, I'm gonna have to modify this on the bottom to get it some way to hook to the bottom. But I don't wanna touch that until I find the hood latch because I need to get it set height wise. So yeah, I'll catch back with you next time we work on this thing. What's up y'all, back at it again. I uh, think we're gonna try to today raise the car up. I gotta put cotter pins and everything. I just gotta raise the front end. For whatever reason, on the EP3, the car sat level, but on the EM2, it sits like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise the front coilovers up. Um, I'm also gonna try to build a intake for it and finish up this T-bracket. I did find the hood latch, as you can see. The sun was just blinding me in the eyes because it comes straight in. So when I was looking, I just couldn't really see anything. Um, got all that stuff. I need to modify the T-bracket a little bit and add another um, rib nut in there. And then, uh, yeah, I also mounted the ECU off camera. It's kind of boring. You just slide it back in place and it's in there. Um, but yeah, so I think my first step is going to be to jack the car up and try to get the front end raised up. So I will uh, get with you after I get this thing raised up. All right, so it can never just be just as easy as, you know, just doing the collars, because as you can see, they're pretty seized and there's no preload in here. So I'm gonna take this entire strut apart and clean the threads and get everything functioning again. So let's get to that. All right, so this is our coilover all disassembled. And you can see I cleaned this part up. This part was where the lower part um, was sitting. You can see it's all rusty. That's kind of how this was. And I was filled with, you know, grime from the road and stuff like that. So what I do is I take a wire wheel. You can use like a wire brush or anything. And I just clean everything up. Now the downside to that is that it's prone to rusting again. So I always put like some kind of grease on it or something like that when I put them back together. Um, you can see. So basically all you got to do is take the top nut off right here. That's up here. And then this slides off, it has a second piece in it right there. And then you slide the spring off, and then you can get all your collars off, and then you can take this guy off. So, that's how I took everything apart. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up now, grease it, reassemble it, and throw it back in the car. And then we'll be able to actually adjust it while it's in the car and get it where we need it to sit. So, see you in a second. Alright, so we got the clothes in, we got all of our cotter pins in, there and there. Um, I'm still gonna have to adjust the height. So to do that, we're gonna have to put the wheels on and then set it down and get it level and do all that. That'll probably not be it a day. This was not supposed to take this long, but as you can see, I left everything loose. So everything actually moves now. So we should just be able to like rotate everything as needed and stuff uh, to raise it and lower it. So I shouldn't have to pull everything back apart again. I should just be able to raise it and lower it as needed. Um, I guess now I'm going to try to knock out this intake. So I'm going to put the wheels back on and then start working on the intake. All right, so the issue that we have going on here is the throttle body's here. It's kind of hard to see in video, but this stuff is higher than this. And I mean, we got all this like wire that we got to go around. And so basically this intake's going to have to come like up and then like straight and then down. And I'm going to stuff it somewhere back here, I think. Um, we're unsure how we're really going to place these lines just yet. I kind of like it the other way with this with the hose on top of this 
but there's not really a way to get around it and do it good because they're gonna hit each other either way um so i think this i don't know either way this is gonna have to come up to go down so i'm gonna start making some pie cuts and i'm gonna get some stuff tack welded and then i'll get back with y'all all right so i got a few pie cuts cut and as you can see this one's straight this is gonna be one that goes in there you always want to start off straight so that's gonna go in there like that as you can see it's pretty close to hitting but when we take the next one you can see this one is an actual pie piece we're gonna put it in here like this and then just start working our way around like that basically is what we're gonna try to do but it's gonna come up kind of quick and turn um, but yeah so what we're doing is basically we're just putting these in here until we get something that fits and doesn't obliterate the lines and stuff I mean as you can see it's like touching it right now um, but we can change the angle of it and stuff like that. That's probably it sitting better right there. Like right there it clears. So I'm going to go ahead and it's hard to like hold these up how they're going to sit in there by myself and tack everything. So I'm going to go ahead and tack all these and then show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so this is what we got right now. It's not tacked right there. So you can see it's just laying there. But this gives you a general idea of what we're doing here. We're making these pie cuts to loop down around here. I just got to hope that the hood's gonna close with it because as you can see it's like the highest point right there but i think it should be fine because it's below that line that's right there and that thing was like hitting the hood also over here it's cut out so i think we should be okay so i need to cut probably hmm, we'll probably cut two more pie cuts and then we might just be able to do a straight piece and then i have like a 90 in there that i might just like and just sit it like facing down because there's air you can get in through the wheel there and through the back there and stuff like that because my other option was to put it here but that's behind the radiator so i didn't want to do that so i'm gonna go ahead and cut two more pie cuts and see if i can get this just it just needs to turn a little bit because it's like in line with this so i need to get it away from there and then shoot it down here so i'm gonna cut that i'll get everything tacked up and then i'll show you guys what it looks like all right so this is what we got all tacked up right now as you can see it kind of like slooped its way over there um it's not hitting right here it is just laying in the back right now because it's not tight but it'll sit up in there somewhere in there that filter will be back in that cubby hole with still enough room for the tie rod to move around and all that and then it's i still have plenty of room to build you know a bracket from here to here or something like that to help hold it up or from here down or something i can still make some kind of support for it but we're not worried about that right now um so i'm gonna go ahead and weld this whole thing up and that'll be done all right so the intake's all done as you can see um i just had these cheap clamps right now i'll go get actual ones i thought i had some three inch ones here but i only have two and a half but yeah that's how that's gonna sit maybe later on down the road i might try to like turn it more but for now it'll work and i think it's gonna be it for the rest of this video i said i was gonna do something else but i don't remember what it is but yeah I think is it for this video so let me know what you guys think like comment subscribe appreciate y'all see you later thanks for watching